in a highly anticipated move, in a highly unanticipated move, the Taliban, you know, overran the country, Afghanistan, um, invaded the capital, Kabul. The president, Ashraf Ghani, had to flee and they've now renamed the country from Afghanistan to the Islamic Emirates of Afghanistan. We've invited Mr. Paul Ejime, an international affairs analyst, to analyze what really is happening in that part of the world. Good morning, Mr. Ejime. Thank you, Anita. Thank you for having me. So we've had debates about the United States' involvement in Afghanistan politics and security for a long time now. And um, there's been talks about them pulling out, withdrawing all their troops, you know, from the Trump era to now that Joe Biden is president. People are blaming Biden for the crisis in Afghanistan because he eventually um, saw the pullout of the troops in the U.S. Do you think but Joe Biden is to blame? So I don't think so. I think um, what informs um, uh, your international uh, affairs or international relations or policy abroad, um, you know, grows from uh, internal dynamics. What is there is that um, it's no longer, um, uh, you know, it's not popular having American troops, particularly those whose uh, children uh, die and whatever. So there has been this uh, fixation to get the troops back. That is one. Two, there are elections coming and so on and so forth. And then to complicate that matter, President um, um, uh, Trump w will seem to have handed um, President Biden a poison chalice. There is really nothing he can do here. If he decides the, the, the already, uh, the announcement has been done and then the plan has been uh, you know, put in place for the withdrawal of troops. So if he now goes against that, uh, he will live with the consequences. Now he has followed it, there are also consequences. And one of the consequences, perhaps you said, um, you said it, it wasn't um, anticipated, is that um, there has been what you call um, failure of intelligence. If um, America, by going to Afghanistan, like they have gone to uh, Iraq and other places, was a mis miscalculation or failure of strategy, this one is a combination of both. Afghan, Afghanistan has become a combination of both failure of uh, strategy and um, failure of um, uh, intelligence. intelligence. Strategy because when they went there, it appears that they didn't, um, there was no plan about aftermath. What do you do after the, the Taliban were dislodged uh, 20 years ago? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I want us to. Um take a look at the person who is now the president of Afghanistan. His name is uh, Mullah Berda. Now, President Trump had released Berda, uh, Be Berada, I beg your pardon, from um, prison in 2018. It was one of the um, negotiations that he had with the Afghanistan government, you know, when they were trying to broker a peace deal. And when we look, you know, at what's happening here in Nigeria, how prisoners seem to be released, I mean, terrorists seem to be released and forgiven and saying they have repented. Um, do you think that it's something that could happen here in Nigeria when we look at the Barada situation? It's always a risky affair negotiating with um, um, extremists because you never can trust, um, you know, them. That is the problem they have problem of trust how can you um, because they are not some of them do not reason rationally they are driven by ideology by driven whether it is uh, religious or whatever and so um, to extremism the point that um, these are supposed to be people preaching um, uh, uh, islam but this is the extremist version of islam uh, the ones that will um, not concede any rights to, to women and then uh, against education and so on. But the liberal uh, uh, Muslims, we tell you, are not going with this um, uh, 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 group of people. So that tells you that is, is the extremist view that is being is the issue. So now negotiation, like I said, is a risky business. You how can you trust a people that um, um, will not 
to respect uh, human rights, because that is what it is. We don't trust the people that um, will go against the norms of uh, democracy, the principles of democracy. Will you trust people that will um, bring, um, you know, rules that um, uh, will marginalize a set of, uh, the, uh, you know, sections of the of the society? That is the issue. Now, to be able, I, you talk about the radicalization. There is radicalization and de-radicalization. Now they are talking as if um, they are, um, the Taliban are now saying they are, they are born again. They, 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 they have changed. Mm -hmm. They will. Um, but I, I was reading, I was looking at um, a report about now asking um, a, a, a reporter, I think with the CNN, a woman to, to cover her face. You must cover your face. But, you know, to tell you, even when they are saying in one hand, they are saying, well, they are now ready to be to liberalize. But at the same time, they had the um, uh, uh, line um, uh, principles are still with them. It is whether a, a leopard really can, can change the sports. And All that right. is the problem. So when you negotiate, whether it's in Afghanistan, whether it's in Nigeria, it is tricky. It is a risky business, but it has to happen. I mean, what do you do? You can you can continue to fight. Now they have been at it for 20 years, and they come come back to to the ground zero, or, or, or you know, uh, you know, from um, uh, where they started. So you have to negotiate to see how far you can go to bring these people to reason, to see that the world will be better when the you know a government is inclusive. When right, a government is not but when there is justice. All right, Mr. Jimet, um, certain things I want to also ask. The uh, First of all, I think, you know, I would like that you speak on, you know, how this can influence other terrorist groups across, you know, the, you know, the world. Um, here, uh, we're dealing with Boko Haram and ISWAP. There's also Al-Shabaab in Kenya um, and other places. Um, so how do you think that the um, events in Afghanistan may influence these other terror groups across the world. That's one. And then another question is, what do you think must be done to fight um, Islamic extremism? Um, because w w we can do all and say all and fund, you know, build infrastructure here and there and, and, and whatnot. But there's a, these are a group of people that place religion and their beliefs in their religion above every other thing, and that includes in, above humanity itself. So what do you think must be done um, across the world to combat or reduce um, extremists, um, 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 Islamists? It seems to be a problem that the world itself is having to, would have to deal with. Yes, and... Um there are two layers to it at the national level and then the international level. But let me also make the point that extremism is not limited to Islam. Yeah, but, you know, but there are, no, it's not. You know, yeah. I, I agree with you, Mr. Ajime, but what we're currently dealing with across the world is the Islamist extremism. We're not seeing yeah. violence from any other religion. Okay, you, we may not see violence, but there are also some uh, very insidious and um, uh, uh, dangerous uh, uh, policy and, and um, you know, practices associated with some religions that um, should not be tolerated. So I, want, I do not want us to now begin to uh, isolate them. I, I want us to deal with them. If we are dealing with extremism, it has to cut across. Absolutely. If it is religion, whether it is by Christians, whether it is uh, uh, Buddhist or uh, whatever, must be condemned for whatever for what it is and let us you know what happens is that these people will tell you that they are they, they can read their own version of um, um whatever it is they are doing of uh, philosophy remember that um uh, uh, johnstown uh, in america some time ago very far back where people you had a mass suicide of uh, you have cults people who follow particular uh, person that they, they they lionize and then they they, they worship as their own and, and then whatever they tell them that is what they do that is also extremism and should be condemned so while we are dealing with um, uh, the jihadists whether it's isis whether it's uh, al-qaeda uh, um uh, el shabab and all that it is dangerous, and then we, we have, have said, look at it from the macro and the micro level. The, the micro level is the national level, where you now have, because at times these things grow, 
and the and the, is extended. If you don't, if you do not catch it or nip it in the board nationally, that is now when it, it grows and then become you know brings all the. Uh, uh, becomes hydra-headed. So at the national level, governments must make it a point to be inclusive, to be to show justice to, to all manner of person, and then or not to be, you know, um, pandering to any particular uh, 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 religion. Look at Nigeria. Nigeria is supposed by constitution is a secular state. But you find that but by practice and some things that happen by government, they, if it appears that um, maybe a particular religion is favored at any particular time. That is not correct. So it is that uh, tendency by governments to deviate from um, the norm, from the principle, from the ground norm. If the constitution says that this country is secular, Whatever you do, make sure that you follow that path and not give, not favor a particular religion against the other. Then what about uh, treatment of people? Women, you do not concern women to uh, uh, the kitchen or anywhere. Women, that is fundamental human rights. Respect the rights of everybody. Treat everybody equally and then be inclusive. Let, the, let people enjoy the benefit of government. You, in Nigeria, they talk about dividends of democracy. Do you have education? Do you have water? Do you have health uh, system? Do you have roads, good roads? Do you have hospitals? These are the, you know, what you call uh, the benefits that must not be, you know, given to one side, one particular section at the expense of the other. It must go round. You must be seen to be not just fair, but be seen to be fair, to be transparent, and then show justice to all manner of people. Okay, yeah, Mr. But, but, you, the... Apologies. But, but how does this translate to reducing the number of people who interpret their religion in a different way and, and you know, want to force their religious teachings or their interpretations of their religion on everybody. Because if you look at what the Taliban is doing or what they, you know, seem to be known for and how they seem to want to suppress women, you know, they have different rules for women in, in Afghanistan. Um, there's also the terror groups across the world that have their own beliefs. Um, it, it, are you saying that these things have happened and the fact that they want to enforce these beliefs and these acts of terror on everybody, do you think, are you saying that these things have happened because of the unfairness in treatment, you, you know, that has happened in different countries? And once again, okay. you know, I'm asking how do you think that their actions will influence other terror groups um, across the world? Okay. I, I, had, I had allowed a gap so, so I, it doesn't become a monologue. So I, I, I remember I identified two layers, with national and then the international level. So that national level, if you now are able to, to put everybody in check, if there is a crime committed by any particular group, you do not show favoritism. As against, if for instance, if one religion can be a member of any religion can do anything and get away with it, while you punish the other people, you are not being fair. That is the type of thing that will happen that will now make people to now say, ah, if this is what is happening, then th those disaffections, those um, uh, unfair treatment, will now coalesce into what you call now extremism. And then become, if you ask uh, uh, the, the uh, Boko Haram people, they have their grouses. They will say this was what happened, this was what happened. But the government is now there to look at all, every citizen, and be able to dispense justice. If you do not do that, check once you see any measure or any uh, incident of extremism, you correct it at the national level. Or uh, whatever complaint they have, you address it, so that it does not now go international. It is the inability of correcting that national Malay that now grows into, becomes a hydra-headed issue, and now they, have, um, comp they, they now have coalition. So uh, I see it will now be uh, uh, collaborating with um, Al-Qaeda, Al-Qaeda with um, uh, Al-Shabaab, and so on and so forth, because the national uh, institution, national authority has not been able to deal with it. But once now, the, the, the uh, what is it called, the, the cat has been let out of the bag. Uh, you now have now to, to come to uh, international collaboration. 
It is no longer one nation being able, and that is the danger, that if you are unable to address it or, or deal with it nationally, once it becomes an international um, uh, concern, international problem like it is now, you now need um, collaborative, international collaboration and partnership to deal with it. So that is what I'm saying. The government, even, are there, even while you are dealing with it uh, internationally, we still have to fight it um, nationally. That is the only way. And it's not easy. Uh, Americans will show you, they have seen that it's not easy. Nobody, no one country can handle terror, terrorism or jihadism or, um, um, you know, uh, uh, Islamic or whatever, extremism that has now taken them. Um, no one country, no matter your, uh, how, the, the, how mighty you are, you need the collaboration. Americans have seen, you see what has happened. They went to Afghanistan 20 years ago, you know, blazing the uh, uh, special forces, driving uh, Qaeda away, using, um, um, you know, some, um, some laws and whatever. Today, they are back. It's as if nothing has happened. It's a failure so, of strategy. And so um, okay. everybody has to go back to the drawing board. So, Mr. Ejime, the Taliban have threatened to topple the Afghan government once the U.S. forces pull out. The U.S. forces have withdrawn and the Taliban have taken over. Um, can we take a step back and analyze um, the question if there was any way the U.S. forces could pull out without you know, the Afghan forces, without the Taliban taking over? Well, that is what I, let's go back to when they came in. They said, well, they were there to make sure that um, uh, they, they, they kept um, uh, attacks, uh, jihadist attacks against okay. America very, very far away. Remember, it was all 9-11 uh, uh, incident and so on. And so they told us they have trained uh, 300,000 um, Afghan uh, soldiers. Where are they today? What has happened is that after spending close to $2 trillion, what happened there was that it was a case of building, encouraging uh, corruption. It's all corruption because if you ask where has that money gone and where are the 300,000 people that have been trained that they didn't even put up a fight. Hmm. Well, the Taliban just rolled, uh, rolled over. So that strategy was ab initio faulty and was never meant to succeed. And so whatever you have, if you you did, there was there will be a time that Americans must have to leave. How they have left now is not only embarrassing, but disgraceful, but has also left Afghan, Af Afghanistan in a very chaotic uh, state. Look at everybody wants to run away. Look at the airport. People, cl you know, clinging to the, the, the air, uh, 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 aircraft, trying to, everybody wants to run away from Afghanistan. Why? Because they did not take care, the, the issue, the, the strategy did not address the main problem. What is the main problem? It's about governance, about telling people, taking care of the well-being of people. They have not done that. They went there blazing. It is not about um, uh, the kind of um, military that you have. There is no. There is also level, not just kinetic. You have to do what you call, um, you know, human intelligence. You have to win the, the souls and mind of people. This strategy didn't do that. It just made money for people in the uh, in defense industry, and then left everybody left um, Afghan, uh, Afghans in uh, in worse state than they, than they were 20 years ago. All right, Paul Jamet, thank you very much. Um, for your analysis and for joining us this morning. Uh, we always enjoy speaking with you. Of course, we will continue to follow developments in Afghanistan. I look forward to speaking with you again. Thank you. Oh, wow. I think we have lost him. Um, this is where we will be wrapping up. It's been very interesting discussions. Uh, sadly, none of them you know, are for celebration, but uh, thanks for staying with us. Uh, remember to catch up on any of these discussions on our social media platforms, simply at Plus TV Africa on Facebook and Instagram. Yes, we're also on at Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. That's our new YouTube channel and Instagram handles as well. My name is Aneta Felix, thanking you for being a part of our beautiful Tuesday. And I am Osao Gi Ogbonwa. <laughs>